So, truly speaking, the soil mechanics is a subset of geotechnical engineering and uh, which concerns with the application of soil engineering and technology to some aspect of the earth, uh, where we talk about soil mechanics, rock mechanics and foundation engineering. When we start questioning what is the effect of the environment on the concepts of the subject, uh, this is the genesis of environmental geomechanics. Is this part clear? We had good discussion about the genesis of the subject, how the subject was created. Is this fine? Okay. So, having defined the genesis of the subject, let us talk about the genesis in the real sense of the environmental geomechanics. The first one is population explosion. I think all of you will agree, it is too much of population which a country can bear, particularly the developing nations where most of the problems are you know coming forward now on our way and we are realizing that our knowledge from the past has failed completely to give us a solution. Western world could still manage because the population explosion is not really much over there. The resources are limited, but the population is also limited. In our case, developing countries is a reverse process. Our resources are limited, but the consumption is becoming too much in every sense. What it affects most? Land resources all right and resources nowadays i'm sure are air and water and land you agree the same volume of the oxygen which was present maybe few years back is still available but how many breathing lungs are there imagine so resources are becoming scarce construction materials are becoming scarce drinking water is becoming scarce is this okay and hence we are talking about sustainability so, the more and more population explosion, a big question mark, how to survive? Food scarcity, I am sure if you check on net, the biggest problem is the ultimate yield capacity of the soil is same, but the population has increased. So, the place from where you come, what people started doing? They started over fertilizing the land and then there was a movie, Urta Punjab. It has a direct relationship with environmental geomechanics. The concept is same. You know what they did? They were overdosing the lands to grow more and more food. And then ultimately what happened? The entire land got contaminated. Now these lands have gone beyond agricultural limits in terms of the constituents and hence crops cannot be done over there. A big question mark. Now, this question agronomists and farmers, agriculturists should have answered. But my question here is who understands soils better? The geotechnical engineers. We understand minerals better. We understand their pore structure much better. We understand the matrix better. We understand these three, four phase models much better. Clear? So, that means truly speaking, the time has come when environmental geotechnology should intervene and give the solution to the society and that is what most of us are doing. So, I will introduce the concept of soil, roots, bacteria, environment interfact, interaction. Until now what you did? You never talked about this interaction. So, soil is important in which the roots are going to develop. And for this process, the bacterial activity is important and the bacterial activity depends upon the environmental factors. So, now our system is four phase system. We are talking about soils in which the roots are present, bacterial activity is harping and then how environment is influencing this balance. So, this is one of the ways to come out of these questions of how the population explosion is going to be sustained in terms of the yield of crop. I did two, three projects from agricultural organization being a geotechnical engineer and I am quite happy and satisfied. And very recently I have been doing a DST project on soil uh, fertility chart, which has been initiated by the government of India. You know, what is the role of geotechnical engineers? We will discuss quite a lot but you are quite close to the answer surface area and God knows what. The second one is industrialization. 
So, if you want to sustain the population explosion, what you have to do? You have to do too much of industrialization, you know, per capita income has to go up, people have to have jobs, they have to survive themselves. That means, the more and more population in a society, the more industrialization and the more industrialization, what it causes? All this, what you are seeing, pollution, all sorts of pollution. Your rivers are polluted, your soils are polluted, your air is polluted, your drinking water is polluted and so on, clear? Unfortunately, industrialization is also because of the poor economy of the country. In western world, what they have done? They have very easily and conveniently offloaded all the industrial processes to the third world. Why? They have stopped mining also there. They do not do any mining. They have money power. They can export the finished product from here at much cheaper and lower price. Is this part okay? So, a lot of you know economics and politics also associated with this environmental geomechanics which you will enjoy slowly and slowly. So, too much of industrialization, too much mining, clear? Too much industrialization, too much power requirement. The more power you require, from where you will bring the power? Burn more and more coal. The more and more coal you burn, the more and more mining you have to do, the more and more toxics you are producing in the air, the more and more toxics you are stacking on the soil. Catch 99 situation. So, what should be done? Should we stop industrialization? We will discuss several examples of what industrialization does to the modern day society and how come industrialization and its effects are being questioned by environmental geomechanics guys. Then of course, sluggish approach, I do not bother, I will go to a picnic to a place, I will enjoy, at the end of the day there will be a lot of garbage which I will be stacking whatever food stuff I will carrying, I will be just consuming and all the discarded material is going to remain there forever. The best possible example of this would be Himalayas, Mount Everest. So many expeditions used to go, I am using the word used to go, now there is a strict warning by the administrators that you are not going to create a landfill which is located at the highest point in the earth. So, whatever materials you are carrying along with you, you have to bring it back along with you, like sailors do. So, whatever they collect from when they are on shore, all the inventories when they have been consumed, the remaining part of the inventories have to be brought back and offloaded from the ship. They are not free to just throw it in the open sea the way we do it from our balconies and the windows of our houses, you know, it does not matter where it falls. <laughs> so, this is what the sluggish and do not bother approach could be. Ignorance, lack of education. So, we do not know what our activities are going to do to the environment in what way, clear? This is ignorance, less education, less training of the minds to preserve your environment might be an ignorance, clear? But no more ignorance is a bliss these days because we are realizing that what ignorance has done to us. See our earlier generations very comfortably ignored all these aspects and hence what has happened? Look at the height of the landfills in every city, they are more than 40, 50 meters now at least the metros. This problem should have been solved at least 30 years back. What would have happened then? We would have been living comfortably. So, ignorance is also a culprit. Do not bother approach is also a culprit. I do not want any botheration because none of my headaches. I have to live another 10, 20, 30 years. After that, let other guys face it. So, there is a lot of interesting issues, you know, which are associated with the genesis of the subject, psychology, sociology, economics, 
politics, international politics, then comes the law, the rules of the land which are governing the entire thing to happen and their violations. So most of the time I tell to my students and when I talk to in public places, environmental geomechanics is mostly a socio, political, technical, financial, legal, industrial profession. I have, I hope I have covered all the aspects, social, political, technical, economical, legal, everything. So, when you are giving a solution, you have to keep in mind all these facets of the answers or the solutions which you are giving. Your solution cannot be economically infeasible. Your solution has to be within the laws of the land, clear or you have to create new laws. Your solutions have to be socially and politically acceptable. So, the more and more newspapers you read, the more and more synthesis of the news you do, you will realize that the technological solutions exist. But unfortunately, what is the problem? God knows, read more and more, clear? Are you able to link all this? So, we need to be uh, socially aware of all the, what, what sorts of things are happening. You have to be versatile, professional. So Gone are the days when you are designing a foundation system without keeping in view of all these five, six issues which I have talked about. So, even the conventional practice of geotechnical engineering cannot be done unless these three, four things are intact, clear? This is what is happening in the present day context. Human greed, do you agree? The major culprit, I am a mining baron, I want to extract even the smallest tinsel of the, you know, mineral which is available, I do not want to leave it for next generation. Why? I have to fill my pockets. Extra deep mines is a recent trend, we are doing two projects on that. Extra deep means 350 meters deep, 600 meters deep, the sky is the limit for your greed. Check it out what is the deepest mine which has been done in the history of mankind and what are the geotechnical issues associated with that. So, the more and more you go deep into the ground, what is going to happen and cut the ground, the water is going to flush in, it becomes stability associated with the seepage pressures, clear? The mi minerals which are present in the ores are going to start interacting with the environment. They may get oxidized, they may get reduced, you know, reduced oxidation reduction the chemical process and what is going to happen once the minerals start interacting with the oxygen? They might get oxidized, they might get reduced and from there when the rain comes, they, they find out a pathway and they travel from one distance to another, to another, to another. Hope this part is clear. So, why human greed? I want to extract everything. There are several cases you must be studying in newspapers where the villagers do not have water to drink, but they are the, these are the places where most of the soft drinks are being produced. How and why? Like if you go to any nation, they have yes. a strong… Adopting. All soft drinks. So, people do not get water to drink, but what is happening? Greed. I will extract out even a last drop of the water which is present in the aquifers. Why? Because I have to fill my bottles which are going to be sold at certain price. Mining industry, food processing, beverages and so on. Why wars are created? Let us talk about the philosophy of war. Beautiful examples you have in the Middle East in the last few years. It is oil only. Sorry? Oil. Oil. Human greed. And if I cannot extract what I wanted, what I will do? I will burn them so that if I could not use, you will also not be able to use. Where it happened? Few years back. I think you can relate everything. 
So now the domain is going international, international politics. So the greed is not limited to only my continent, not to my nation only. I will drill a well, it will go up to vertical up to a certain place and then it will become horizontal to suck out all the resources of the neighboring country. We call it as a directional drilling. Read on this, it is a beautiful subject, directional drilling. From directional drilling, I can get the resources crossing the international boundaries without anybody knowing where what I am doing. This is also a beautiful example of human greed. I can suck out all the water which you have, I can suck out all the hydrocarbons which you might be having and you might be thinking is my property today. This in short is a philosophy to uh, deal with, uh, somebody was talking about, uh, you were I think asking this question, Vikram, environment and geomechanics, alright. So truly speaking the domain is limited, we are limiting it to make our life comfortable. Otherwise, this is all three dimension. So, we talk about mostly underground processes. Logic is simple, whatever emissions are taking place in the air in a particulate matter form, normally they precipitate back when the rains come and life becomes simple. So, environmental scientists take care of mostly the emissions in the atmosphere. Geotechnical engineers who are dealing with environmental geomechanics would normally consider underground space first of all, beneath the surface and we talk about the underground environment. So when you enter a mine, you know underground mines, that environment is different. How, how many of you have ever been to a mine? No one, sure. You should get a chance, you should, you should go and, and try to see how many meters you can step down and what is going to happen to you when you breathe there, psychosomatic syndrome. So what are the situation I am talking about, why I am saying this? So lack of oxygen could be at high altitude also as well as at the lower altitudes also in the different environmental conditions and then psychosomatic syndrome that you are entering a space which is beneath the ground. Yeah, it is the environment they have created. So go and spend some time over there, take your friends. That is an interesting feeling. Right now the metro work is going on, minus 75 meter, minus 80 meter deep uh, in Bombay. But again the point is unless you are physically fit, it is difficult to take you over there. You have to run 5 kilo, 5 kilometers before you enter the tunnels, non-stop endurance test minimum. Yes, yeah. then only you are allowed to enter. <laughs> so you have to be physically fit to be a champion of environmental geomechanics, alright. I can show you some of the videos which are quite, uh, what do you call them as, uh, and they may create uncomfortable situations from people. I mean, it is a different subject altogether, but yes, as a environmental geotechnology, if you want to do profession, you have to take these challenges. Anyway, so coming back to the point, so we have to talk about the underground environment and the problems associated with it. Sir, I am actually amused by the vastness of the subject. Uh, like uh, half an hour before, uh, we were discussing about a small like soil contaminant and all and then we uh, went to like international issues, social and everything. Yeah, it's a super, super sonic, uh, you know, aviation. I want to discuss a situation which is uh, um, mainly related to this subject only. Uh, cool byproducts are there, so after years, the disposals may go uh, high and high. So, in winters maybe, in, mainly in winters, the coal byproducts automatically heated up due to the temperature changes this uh, air pressure changes and ultimately the whole disposal get heated. So out, I do not know what is the phenomena behind it, but it happens every year. Where? Uh, cold, uh, around the mines, where, dispo where, dis where they dispose the dis uh, byproducts of the coal. That is the overburden. Yes, sir, overburden. Okay, so what happens, say it again. Uh, they get heated up 
the whole disposal in the winter season only you know temperature difference maybe or pressure difference maybe i don't know the answer but uh, i'm just behind i don't know there. maybe you collect some information on this and then let's discuss it technically yeah so this is something uh, related to the environment change or the things which is happening it's too early for me to understand what you are saying so my question is uh, we have come, come across uh, uh, situations which affect soil uh, negatively is there any situation that will affect uh, like positively like influence it in a good man oh yes why not can you uh, give some example i mean you can also answer i'm sure you are aware of all those situations mm. for agriculture what is required uh, like you have the field and then you plow it and then leave it for aeration huh. that's the best answer so what we have done we have rejuvenated the soil a simple thing it's going on since last 5000 years is it not you agree one example at the same time try to read from the net what is the influence of more organic matter present in the soil how it is creating havoc see agriculture is they want to create more and more organic matter in the soil but what's happening because of the presence of high organic content in soils quick answer would be the decompose and when they decompose what happens read all this yes so in punjab actually in ludhiana we have highly industrialized zone so what people they are doing they are dumping mm, the waste is underground without telling the pollution board or might they might be knowing it so i will possibly try to learn in this course the phenomena how it interacts with ground water like if you dump uh, at 2 meters 3 meters say industrialized waste how it goes i'll try to understand in this course Yeah, so most of the soil in Punjab and Haryana has become whitish. You must have observed because of the fertilizers. Uh, now, two excessive fertilizers. What do they do? There is something known as uptake capacity of plants. So, if I overfeed you, what is going to happen? That's also a problem, is it not? Overfeeding is also a problem. Underfeeding is also a problem. So it should be optimal feeding. Now, who will discover the optimal dose? That's the science and technology which people ignored. So they thought that just over inject, over dose the fields, and the crop will be much more. Now, in the process, what happened? Now, going to the mechanics part of this. So the more and more organic matter you are adding to a system, the system which was earlier quite you know fertile why because the aeration of the system was good now by adding organic matter what has happened all those pores have got choked the water stagnates there and when water stagnates there organic matter decomposes and when organic matter decomposes what happens all the pores are choked poor plants can't get any fresh oxygen and air what's going to happen this is the whole cycle now convert the whole model into a mechanics model is this part clear so first we created a hypothesis and now what we are trying to do we are trying to use tools of the knowledge all subjects and then we are creating a solution and when you create a solution it's mostly quantified 